Oil has become a very hot topic in the last decade or so. It has almost single-handedly fueled our incredible development over the last century. It helps our lives run day to day, from heating homes and moving transport, to improving crop yields and keeping our food fresher for longer. It is involved in a lot more of our world than many of you probably even realize. And we owe it a huge debt of thanks for the part it played. But we have always known oil would end one day. The reserves are already more difficult and more expensive to obtain than at any time before. It will end eventually. And before that, it will get more and more expensive. This is not even a matter for debate. This is just the way it is. It is just physics and economics. What is up for debate, however, is the trajectory of that decline and the impact it will have on our world. And that's what we will consider today. Let's have a look at the brief history of oil, shall we? Even recently, oil was at record prices and record production levels. In 2008, the price reached $148 a barrel. And last year, 2019, with record-breaking demand and supply of close to 100 million barrels daily, with it being openly declared that this must be peak oil. Peak oil is the theorized point in time when the maximum rate of extraction is reached, after which it is expected to enter a terminal decline. So, why does price matter? Although a high barrel price does lead to a higher end cost to the consumer, all things being equal, it also opens up the viability of more difficult to extract sources. Look at this chart. Saudi Arabia and Iran are down below $10 a barrel to produce. Compare that to Russia at twice as much, US shale at three times as much, or with Brazil and the UK coming in at four or five times as expensive. Market price is critical. Those who produce it the cheapest will survive the longest as the profit margins are greatest, giving them most flexibility. To supply this much oil at this price requires very large equipment. Oil rigs, pipelines, refineries, oil tankers, lorries, distribution hubs, retail outlets. It takes a lot of time and money to keep these running at peak efficiency, to allow the price we expect to pay to be achievable and profitable. Well, enough to make it all worth the effort. Now just think for a minute. Industries like this cannot be just turned on and off quickly and easily. They need to keep running. Some parts can be run at lower capacities, but the price of each unit rises quickly, reducing profits to almost nothing, and they can be switched off if necessary. Some parts cannot even be switched off. Well, not easily. They take a long time to run down to zero. Things get cold, and then they take a long time to warm back up and get running to anywhere near full capacity. Reduced production capacity increases the unit cost and reduces profits. Remember that. Okay, a brief history done. Let's come back to the present day. In 2020, demand slumped. Lockdowns and forced shutdowns in the world's richest economies saw the world slow down abruptly. The skies were clear, the roads were empty, the shops and businesses were shut. Have a look at this. The previously insatiable appetite for oil slowed by about 20% to below 80 million barrels a day. What were the consequences of this? Well, today, the global oil industry is in a tailspin. 
Demand has not regained the losses it suffered so production is still below optimum. Prices have collapsed to around $40 a barrel. Profits have been wiped out. The oil majors, giant global corporations including BP, Chevron and Shell, are taking billions of dollars in losses whilst cutting tens of thousands of jobs. Smaller companies are declaring bankruptcy. Investors are looking elsewhere for their returns. So is this an end to profitability? Well, to add further misery and hardship, corporate profits, market values and investor returns have all seen massive declines. Between 2012 and 2017, BP's profits dropped 68%, Chevron's by 65%, ExxonMobil's by 56%, Shell's by 50%. The US fracking industry lost $300 billion in the last decade. Only a few companies ever actually made a profit. Well, some people got very rich. How about writing off the losses and previous assets and reducing costs? Well, in total, the oil and gas sector are expected to write down a staggering 300 billion in assets this year alone. That is as much as the fracking industry lost in the last decade. Shell will reduce its asset value by 22 billion dollars this year. Chevron was forced to write off 10 billion in losses and cutting 6,000 workers. BP is selling 15 billion of assets, including its petrochemical business, and eliminating 10,000 jobs. Exxon Mobil has reduced asset values by $3 billion and will eliminate 7,500 workers in the US alone. 55 oil companies have announced plans to cut more than 37 billion from their spending budgets. It has now got to the stage where they just do not have the ability to borrow the sort of money that they need anymore. Additional factors, global activism, this has led to an estimated $11 trillion worth of commitments to sell off oil, gas and coal holdings by last year. The enormous debts that they carry. Their market prices are now too low and with no prospect of large future profits. New reserves are not investment opportunities any longer. Increasing competition from other sources such as renewables, bacteria, biomass, reclamation and others are increasingly lowering their costs and increasing capacity at an exponential rate. Consumer awareness. The environment has become a much larger interest for a great many purchasers at many levels of the economy now. The cheap oil is all but gone and the competition is closing in. So what uses 100 million barrels a day of oil? Let us have a quick look at a breakdown. This breakdown of crude oil shows that about 51.4% is used for gasoline. This commonly becomes petrol and is used mostly in cars. 15.3% is for distillate fuel oil which goes to diesel mostly. 3.3% is residual fuel oil, which is the worst of a bad bunch. It is used in shipping, furnaces and power plants. These three categories account for 70% of the supply, or should we say 60 to 70 million barrels a day. What about competitors? So, Transport, heating and power generation are the biggest users. We are always going to need new energy sources for our ever increasing demands. Well, at least for the foreseeable future anyway. Fossil fuels were only ever a finite source, destined to get increasingly expensive as the cheap options come to an end. So, who are the challengers charting a cleaner and more sustainable future for us to follow? Renewable energy sources. 
Well, these will only get better and cheaper as time progresses, which contrasts with oil. Have a look at this. Since 2010, solar technology costs are down by 85%. Wind is down by 49%. Battery storage is down by 85%. This has been brought about due to technology improvements and economies of scale in both material production and implementation something the fossil fuel industry has had the benefit of for decades and decades now, which is why they are so cheap on the unit scale. And we can see countries switching their supplies over as well. Look at this. In 2014, only Denmark, Germany and Uruguay had renewable energy sources that were cheaper than coal or gas. By 2019, that had changed significantly. Wind and solar surged in just five years to being the cheapest for over 60% of those listed. But okay, although these are great, it is really transportation where the bulk of oil goes. Electric transportation. And this pace of change has not left the transportation sector behind either. Electric vehicles are now far more desirable than their internal combustion engine variants being both superior in performance and user experience, almost at parity with sticker price and massively cheaper and easier to own in both running and servicing costs. Indeed, we may well have already seen the peak of global car sales in 2018. 2019 was lower, maybe because people are putting off buying a new car as they are waiting to have more choice with the electric variants that are coming out over the next few years. 2020 has seen new car sales massively down. Will this bounce back? Only time will tell, but I do not think it will return to the same high levels. I am sure you can see the relationship. As transport networks are superseded by electric variants, the demand for oil will drop massively. Remember, over 65% of crude oil is used for petrol and diesel. Now, this would not happen immediately, obviously, but once the precedent has been set, the ball could start rolling very quickly. And this would reduce the need for oil on an almost exponential drop. The more these cash cows are removed from the equation, the higher the unit costs for all other derivatives will be. Plastics especially, which have benefited from such a low cost for raw materials for many years now. The higher their cost spirals, the more opportunity for disruptive technologies and companies to come along and pull out the carpet from under the old guard until a critical mass is reached. And I believe this could happen a lot quicker than many analysts are currently predicting. Recycled plastic is already approaching cost parity with virgin plastic made straight from oil. And new processes are coming along constantly. Now, I am sure some of you are thinking that this will be a slow process. But let me offer a single thought experiment for one strand of a possible future that could change everything. Autonomous electric robo taxis. Imagine this, the ride-sharing taxi of the future. No driver, electric, charged by solar, no need for tea breaks, dinner breaks, toilet breaks, available to work every hour that it is not charging. These would probably drop the cost of transport to such a point that it would be cheaper to get a taxi than to own your own vehicle it will just sit on your driveway gathering dust. So you see, once this becomes the norm, you could see quite a rapid uptake. It may only be limited by how fast the vehicles can be produced. And anyway, we will not need to replace every car. It has been estimated that even with covering rush hour requirements, the number of vehicles 
required to completely cover everyone would be just 20% of the number of vehicles that we currently have on the road. So how will this play out into the future? What changes will we see? Without a doubt, significant changes to the whole oil industry are on the way. How much of it will be left in the future? Who will be left in the future? What form will it take? Will it even survive as we know it today? Only time will truly tell. But here are a few of my own thoughts for some possible developments over the next 20 years or so. 2021, we will see the arrival of level five fully autonomous electric cars. 2022, the choice of electrical variants in the marketplace will explode. Consumers will increasingly put off buying a new vehicle for longer now, because even if the variant they want is not available, they would rather wait an extra year or two with their old vehicle and not have to buy another ICE vehicle. 2025. Fully autonomous robo-taxis will start becoming more available in certain locations, depending on the legal frameworks and how it rolls out in each country. Electric car sales will be limited only by their production capacity. Ice car sales will be in free fall. Nobody but a very small minority will want anything to do with an ice vehicle. 2030. Electric ships and planes will start becoming mainstream and the cost of wind and solar will be so cheap that they are destroying all the remaining fossil fuel markets. We will see the first working examples of fusion reactors coming online. 2040, all transport is electric except for vintage pieces at shows and outlying regions with slower uptakes and turnover of vehicles. Micro generation for businesses and at home for the consumer has become a new standard now and centralized generation is starting to take a back seat. By 2050, fossil fuel oil will be a niche industry and very expensive, replaced by alternatives either grown from plants or bacteria or some novel new option. And how will this impact the world? We will have cleaner air, cleaner water, more sustainable options, more appreciation of the complexity of the interlinking ecosystems and how degrading one can lead to a chain reaction. Autonomous vehicles are going to change the world in ways you cannot even conceive. And that topic is next. So be sure to check back and I will see you next week.